Katie Darrell, and today we are at Home and Social with my friend, Matt Pinfield, the music god. How are you, Matt? Hey, Katie, how are you? I'm doing great. I am doing great. I always tell everyone, you are a music encyclopedia, and I feel like you hear that all the time, don't you? But I'm glad that people feel that way. I mean, you know, it's a nice compliment, and, uh, you know, I love music so much. I mean, I'm very, very grateful that, you know, I've been able to work in music for professionally for 36 years yeah. you know I, I did my first commercial radio show 36 years ago and then you know i started on mtv almost 28 years ago yeah. uh so it's crazy you know when i look back on it that time flies by you know <laughs> but uh hey i'm still here and i'm very very grateful and i love getting to do uh, the top 10 reveal with you i have so much fun with that it is so much fun so for those of you just tuning in if you're not familiar um matt pinfield is one of my favorite guests that we have on the top 10 revealed which is part of access tv sunday night lineup um and i always you know listen we have everyone from you know sebastian bach and d snyder and jack osborne and we have matt pinfield and everyone kind of knows what they're going to be talking about when they come into the room um, they get, you know, okay, we're talking, this is the list and here are the three songs that you're going to be yeah. talking about. And, and some people do their homework and some don't, but going back to the music encyclopedia term that I use for you, it, it's just like you rattle off the most obscure facts and names. I mean, you'll be like, oh, that album was produced by so-and-so. It was recorded in such and such city. And if I don't, if I recall correctly, someone ha had a situation getting there late because their 57 Chevy died. And I'm like, where is he getting this information? <laughs> do you do that much research or are, do you have kind of yeah. a, a memory where you just read it once and it's there? Well, you know, it's a little bit of both. I mean, I still like love to read about music and music history, but I do memorize. I have a really great memory for musical facts because I love music. It's one of those things where yeah. I might not be able to remember what I ate for dinner last night, but I can tell you, you know, something that, about the trogs or the kinks in 1966. It's because I'm so passionate about and love music so much that it's the thing I retain. And I'm, you know, very grateful that I have uh, that ability. So it's cool. And I, you know, it's because it's exciting too. You know, when I hear a story about a band like, uh, you know, the Trogs in the 60s when they recorded Wild Thing, those guys literally had to like work, uh, you know, their, their motor, they had a, a string that was tied through the front of the car. And that, that's how they literally changed gears trying to get from Scotland all the way down to, uh, to London to record the song. And they almost, you know, like, I mean, there's funny stories like that. There's so, there's always something, you know, and they, I love the backstory about music and that's why I love the show when we do it, you know, it's so, so much fun. So anytime an artist releases a book or a memoir or a deluxe set that has cool liner notes. I mean, are you first in line at the store to order this stuff? Cause you just went yeah. to the store and you're hungry for you it? You know, yeah, I mean, I do. And you know, I've gotten to write some myself, you know, like I wrote the liner notes in when, when Queen, when their rights reverted back, uh, just to explain what I mean by that, um, you know, EMI owned them, but for years in America, they came out on a label called Electra. Well, when they, when the rights reverted back to EMI, they licensed them to Disney, which is Hollywood records. Well, I got a phone call from Brian May and they asked me if I would write the learner. So I wrote the book. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, well, I did. I did. I dropped it, but you know, so I, I mean, it. literally, but I, but I wrote the liner notes for that eight CD box set called the crown jewels. I've written liner notes in the sound garden box set. I've, um, you know, so I've gotten the opportunity to write things myself. Um, and I also love to read what other journalists write and, uh, and I love music history. But you have all these rock star connections. Um, and obviously they are all very impressed by you and your work ethic and the things that you do that they reach out to you to help them with special events. And a lot of that has been going on during COVID times. There've been a lot of bands that have had anniversaries or live streams or events that you've been involved in. Let's brag about some of the things you've been doing the last couple of months and the bands you've been working with. Oh yeah, you know, I did with the Goo Goo Dolls. I just did a thing and they're, they're actually uh, December 12th, they have a pay-per-view Christmas special, but I did a streaming one with them, one with Bush, uh, with Linkin Park. I did their um, anniversary press conference for the rest of the world, their international press conference. So I moderated that with the guys in Linkin Park because you know, I've known them from the beginning. And uh, so I'm always, you know, the good news for me is I, I, I've been so blessed because I'm so busy, you know, and, and I, but I, you know, I'm, not, I'm always looking for more to do, but you know, I've been able to, you know, and I stay in touch with a lot of people, whether it's like Ringo Starr or Joe Walsh or, 
you know, new younger bands, you know what I mean? Like, like, like young blood or dreamers who are on your shirt, you know what I mean? And so it's like, you know, I just, I mean, I live and breathe it. And for me, I, I love it so much. And that's why you and I get along so great because, you know, we're always so excited to work together. We have a good time, you know? I, I love when you come to the studio. So let's talk a little bit about um, the Top 10 Revealed, one of our upcoming episodes. Um, and the, for those of you just tuning in right now, I'm Katie Darrell. He is Matt Pinfield. This is At Home and Social. Access TV, Sunday nights, totally rock. Um, and at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, is my show, The Top 10 Revealed. Uh, and Matt is a mainstay. I think you were one of the first uh, people I reached out to to be on the show, and you've been a mainstay ever since. One of our upcoming episodes is the Top 10 Grunge Bands, which I love. love yeah, music. it's really exciting. I mean, you know, I love that music, too, because it was that period... You know, not only was I in, in uh, commercial radio, but I was also at MTV at that period of time. So I was there for all these historic moments. You know, I was there when Nirvana were actually rehearsing for their legendary performance on Saturday Night Live. I was there with like one of the guys who worked at the record label, a great friend of mine, Mark Cates, and one of my other buddies. We were like the only ones in the empty space where to shoot Saturday Night Live with Nirvana while they're doing smells like teen spirit and um, <clears throat> territorial pissings. And then, you know, like I worked, I've done so much stuff with Alice in Chains and Soundgarden. And I remain friends with guys like Mike McCready from Pearl Jam. And, you know, I just, and I was very, of course, very close to Chris Cornell, um, which was a very sad loss for me. And of course, Chester and Scott Weiland. So, you know, um, yeah. I love that era of music. I, and I think the music's timeless. That's the thing that's amazing yeah. about it. And let's talk about how grunge came on the scene. Um, I mean, it, it ticked off a lot of the hair bands. A lot, a lot of bands were pissed off that what is this new thing that's coming in and getting in our way. Um, but I love when, when you tune into the Top 10 Revealed and, and watch this episode where we rank grunge bands, Jeff Pilsen of Foreigner and Dawkin is one of our guests. And he says something great. He's like, at, at the end of it all, it's just good music. It's rock and roll. It's yeah, not it's, the enemy. It wasn't yeah. the enemy. It yeah. was just different. Yeah. And there was great music in the in that 80s period, too. We've got people sometimes call the hair bands or the glam bands. They had some great music, and there's great songs, and so did the grunge era. So, you know, it's all rock and roll at the end of the day. And uh, the good stuff stands out, and it stays in your memory, and it's, you know, things that, that have so much connection with people. And uh, so the grunge thing, this, I was really happy when you decided to do this list. I know it's going to be such a great episode. When you first started hearing grunge music, and yeah. you, I mean, you're, you were a music director, right? I was music director and then program director, both. But music director first, yeah. Were, I know, obviously, you were excited to play this new sound, but were you nervous to play this new sound? No. In fact, you know, there was a real changing of the guard radio period that kind of started with Jane's Addiction, where there were programmers that thought it sounded too much like classic rock. And they were, like, into things that were a little more twangy at that time. And not that I didn't love that stuff, too, but I remember saying to uh, some other programmers, man, you're wrong if you don't give this Jane's Addiction a try. And that kind of, as Tom Morello will say from Rage Against the Machine, Jane's were really the first band that edged in. It was Guns N' Roses, then Jane's. You know, Guns were kind of like, took the, you know, the 80s glam yeah. and hair metal thing and moved it and made it more, a little more dirty and like, yeah. you know, dangerous. Guns were dangerous. And then you had Jane's Addiction who were over the top. And then that kind of made room for bands like Nirvana when they kicked through. And then, of course, Soundgarden were already making records and they were developing their sound. Alice in Chains came out, you know, Pearl Jam, who were Mother Love Bone originally. So, I mean, they're, and, you know, I, mean, I can't forget Mud Honey and Screaming Trees and all those other people from the Pacific Northwest that were great. So, yeah, I mean, I, it's just, I was, I remember playing it and people going to me, you're playing that Nirvana single on Sub Pop Sliver? Uh, I mean, it, you're playing that in heavy rotation. They go, are you, are you out of your mind? And I'm like, no, I'm telling you, there's something about this band. And it's, um, you know, it's in my book too, which is cool. There's a whole story. I talk about the Pacific Northwest. And I, I want to show this to everyone because if you don't know that it's out, I wrote a memoir. It's called All These Things That I've Done, it's, which is named after the killer song that Brandon Flowers actually wrote about me, um, which is pretty amazing. The story is that 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 bridge i got soul but i'm not a soldier is because the u.s army called me up uh when i was working at columbia records in a and r 
um, and asked me if I would come mentor soldiers returning from Iraq and Afghanistan uh, that were wounded, that were musicians. So I flew to Colorado City, Colorado, and I went right from doing that with those soldiers to Las Vegas to watch the killers play in their parents' garage. And they already had Mr. Brightside and all these songs when they're playing in their parents' garage. And that's the story. But that night that Brandon Flowers met me, he wrote that song. But there's a lot of great stories in that book. So I, they re-released my book on paperback. It originally came out uh, on hardcover. Wait, 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 hold it up nice and yeah. still. Let us okay. absorb it. Yeah, me. here we go. This, good plug. Yeah, yeah, this is it. It's called... Uh, uh, all these things that I've done, it's a memoir, and uh, then they wrote on the bottom, My Insane Improbable Rock Life. That's what Simon and & Schuster and Scribner thought was a good subtitle. Um, and they did like, you'll laugh, it's like, I look like a Pez dispenser on the side. You see that? It's like, <laughs> you see that? It's got my head, it's a Pez dispenser, and then there's the Alfred Hitchcock type cover. You know a lot of stories, you know a lot of inside scoop, all right? And I want to transition this to um, Access TV has another great original show. It's called Music's Greatest Mysteries, all right? And it's on Sundays. Yeah. Um, it's at 9 Eastern. So first you watch the top 10 revealed, and then you get some pop. Yeah. And then you watch uh, Music's Greatest Mysteries. And I love this. I, I'm obsessed with folklore. I'm obsessed yeah. with, like, kind of gas up in the juice and yeah. um this this show explores all these different stories that you've heard over the years and they try to prove them or disprove them um i know there's one that avril lavigne is not really avril lavigne um and there's some other great stories what what are some music myths or mysteries that have come that, here over the years? well i'm really excited the first episode they start with you know brian wilson uh not brian wilson dennis wilson and his connection to charles manson and his family and uh, that's a really great one. I know there's some other episodes coming up with like backwards masking. Did the CIA have something to do with Bob Marley's death? There's some great themes in all these episodes of music's uh, greatest mystery. So it's going to be an exciting show. I'm pumped about it, you know? And it's back to back with my, you know, the mainstay, our favorite, the top 10 revealed. So we're good. You know, it's going to be, it's a good, that's a good hour, right? It is. It's it's so fun. And I just love hearing these stories and getting everyone's insight on, you know, the, the truth and the rumor and the lore. Um, and it's, it's one of those shows that can go on forever. Truth is, of course, stranger than fiction. So I believe anything's possible. But I love that they're going to explore these different things. So it yeah. should be really fun. The show's you called uh, Music's Greatest Mysteries. It's on Access TV. Watch it Sunday nights at 9 Eastern. You will not be disappointed. Uh, let's talk about you. I know we've been talking about you, but I really want to get into you. Um, you, you have your radio show. Um, how yeah. Can, how oh, can you know, I I'm, you every day? Well, you know, I'm on, I'm on the radio um, on a show called Flashback, which Westwood One has been, um, you know, uh, syndicating for... Literally, uh, I, I'm going to celebrate my 10th year doing this classic rock history show. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing it for 10 years in January, which is so exciting, you know? Um, and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with doing that. But, I, you know, I do a lot of different things, you know? I do like a, you know, a, a live streaming uh, show, which I just started doing during a pandemic called In a Lonely Place with Matt Pendle because I was here by myself in my apartment because I went through a breakup. Like I, I broke up with the girl, woman that I was with about a year and a half before. So I was all of a sudden all by myself. So I thought In a Lonely Place was a great name. It's a Humphrey Bogart movie, a New Order or Smithereen song. And so I did that and I, I continued doing that on a weekly basis as a stream. And um, I, you know, most recently just did a thing with Ozzy Osbourne for the 40th anniversary of Blizzard of Oz, which aired all over the country on about 90 radio stations Yeah, I, with Ozzy and Sharon. That was really cool. But, you know, I've, I've had so much fun and I, and I continue to just do a lot of different things and um, you know, you'd ask me to to show you some cool things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do. We do. It's a segment called Rock and Tell, and it's like show and tell with rock and music memorabilia. So I just know you have so much stuff, and I know that you also have a storage unit uh, in an undisclosed location. I have two I of them. If someone knew where it was. Yeah, there are two of them. I'm going is... there with a sledgehammer to break. Yeah, them. I know. It's incredible how much stuff is in there, like just rare stuff. But this is just like, I mean, it's really funny because. Um, my ex-girlfriend had put a bunch of my, my laminates in these different frames, but here's one from uh, just past year, Foo Fighters Hologram All Access Pass, which is very cool because I was with them at Rock and Rio. And so I wanted hold, to show it up nice and slow. Okay, here you go. See that it's, can you see it with the, yeah, uh, right there. yeah. it's really cool. And then 
This is great. This is a gift from my friend Pete Santiago, a great friend of mine, another DJ from back on the East Coast. And this picture was taken of me. If you look on stage in front of 150,000 people at Rock and Rio this past year uh, in 2019, right before the pandemic, this was such a great experience for me. I'm on stage here. Um, I hosted this stream around the world and there were so many great bands. It was a seven day festival. And believe it or not, you see this stuff up here? That's a zip line. I zip lined across the crowd of 150,000 people. I was challenged, and on the last day, I zip lined across the crowd. It was like, the, you talk about like oh. nerve wracking, man. Like I climbed a tower and then I just went, and you know, we have it on film, but oh, you know, so um, you know, that's the kind of thing. Oh, my cat's running around behind you. I mean, my daughter's cat, anyway. He has just two of them. Does the cat have a rock and roll name? Um, well, yeah, it's named after my daughter used to work at Electric Lady Studios, the one, the, the house that Hendrix built. So that cat is named Lady, Electric Lady, right there. And then she has another cat named Banksy. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Now, all growing up, all her, all our cats and dogs when she was a kid were all named after rock stars. <laughs> Every one of them. You know, we had Mooney, which was Keith Moon from the Who. You know what I mean? Like, yep. well, we call it Keith because you know. Mooney sounds like something else, but, um, you know, right, exactly. Uh, we had, I had a dog named Lizzie after Thin Lizzie, because, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Phil and Otso. I had this Rottweiler Doberman Shepherd mix, and her name was Lizzie, and she was like, you know, she was beautiful, but don't mess with my daughters, you know what I mean? It was that kind of thing. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, um, I'm just, uh, I mean, even with this pandemic, I mean, I'm just got to say that I'm so glad we've been able to continue doing the shows, you know, and, you know, I've been staying busy and it makes me really happy. I'm very healthy, you know. I mean, I, I'm i sober, uh, you know, like over yeah. six months now. Uh, I've been working out. I work out like five days a week. I hike. And, you know, remember, my head went through a windshield when somebody hit me with a car. I was going to say, are we allowed yeah. to talk about when you yes. got hit by a car? Yes, we are. You know, I mean, I was crossing the street, sober, by the way. I was walking across the street. A car ran into me like it came out of nowhere. I jumped up and broke my leg in half. Okay, I went, I went up into the person's car. My head went through their windshield, tore my head open, and then I was thrown 15 feet, landed on my back on the street here in Hollywood, and miraculously I survived. And I remember getting in the ambulance and them saying to me, they put me in and lift me, cut all my bloody clothes off, and they said, can you feel your toes? And I said, yes, I can. And they were like, you are an absolute miracle, my friend. Because you're not brain dead, you're not paralyzed. Um, and, you know, and it took me eight months to, like, walk without a cane, you know, but I worked really hard at physical therapy. And now I hike, you know, three times a week. I'm up at Griffith Park here in Hollywood, um, you know, and I work out with a trainer. And I feel very, very healthy. I'm sober and I'm, and I'm just in good spirits, you know? I love it. I love you. And I, 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 <laughs> I love you just have such a good positive attitude. Is it true, music mystery yeah. time, is it true that when you got brought into the ER, after being hit by a car that was going yeah. over 30 miles an hour? Or yeah, it was almost 40. Yeah, it was around 40, yeah. So you get hit by this car, you're, you're bloody and you're mangled, um, but the ER doctor recognized you and told everyone to stop and slow down and take their time stitching you up so you didn't have a yeah. car. Yeah, that's the truth. When it was, I mean, I literally heard one doctor say to the other, he goes, Shall we want to use staples? And he goes, no, no, no. I watched this guy on MTV. He's, 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 a, rock, he's a rock guy. I, I'm, I'm going to sew him up slowly. And he did an amazing job. It's a doctor from Beverly Hills. And it's so, it, you know, you can see it if you look closely. But, I mean, this was completely split open. My ear was partially hanging off. Um, I know it sounds pretty. Yeah, but I didn't lose any hearing. I mean, I, I, I'm so blessed. I think every day, like, Thank God I looked and saw the car coming out of the car in my eye or I would have been under it maybe. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, so I'm just, I'm grateful. I live with gratitude every day just that I'm here and I can talk music with you and I can still come on the show and hang with you all the time. And, you know, I, I love doing it. it you uh, know? Last question. When are you growing the beard back, man? You know, I'm going to do it. It's really funny. I just saw on Facebook one of my, um, you know, one of my pictures came up from a year ago and I'm like, actually, you know what? Maybe I just time to grow that beard back. And you know, at you, first you I like was it. like, "What's up with the beard?" And then when you shaved the beard off, I was like, "Well, where'd my beard go?" Yeah, I know. No, it's funny. You know, I, I I'll tell you why I I shaved the whole thing off, because I didn't have a great barber. Like in order for it to look good, you know, I went to a barber. Once they closed everything down, and we were on lockdown. I said, "Well, I'm just going to shave it off." But I mean, the barber shops for now are open again, yeah. so. 
I think I'm going to let it grow back. It's got, I got to do it, you know? Because people have said to me, where's your beard, man? You know what I mean? What happened to your beard? It's you been know? so great chatting with you. I really appreciate you always taking time for me personally and professionally um, with the show. Uh, for those of you watching at home, he's Matt Pinfield. You've got to listen to his radio shows. You've got to get his book. You've got to watch him on the Top 10 Revealed on Access TV. And he knows everything there is to know about these folklore. So make sure you also tune in for uh, Music's Greatest Mysteries. It's Sunday nights on Access TV. You will not be disappointed. Matt, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Katie. It's so great to see you.